have now the honor to call the president of the Fondation Jeune Scientifique, Mr. Carlo Hansen, on stage to share his word of welcome and of officially open the event. Thank you. Your Royal Highness, distinguished guests, dear young scientists. Your Royal Highness, we are honored by your presence today, but also thankful for you and Princess Stephanie's interest and encouragement. Thank you all for joining us today. My speech is going to be in English so that our international guests and the International Expo Science Luxembourg participants can follow. Mein Ursprung wird aber auch demnächst auf Lützebäuerisch auf unserem Sit, dem www.fgsl.lu, nur zu lesen sehen. So, here we are again. This year, I welcome you to the 50th edition of our national contest and the 11th edition of our Expo Science. I hope that despite the fact that we all have to keep physical distance, participants in the two events will, have, will see the opportunity to get to know each other and participate in the virtual get-togethers via our digital platform. One thing I know for sure, even though we have had to separate you physically, you all have something in common, intellectual curiosity. But is curiosity a good thing? There is a saying, curiosity kills the cat, used as a warning that inquisitiveness can result in danger. This certainly was true for scientists in the late Middle Ages, when asking too many questions could get you into a lot of serious trouble. Think of Galileo, who was persecuted for his support of heliocentrism, the astronomical model in which the Earth and planets revolve around the Sun. Remember Giordano Bruno, a Dominican friar who was burned at the stake for his cosmological views. Andreas Vesalius, curiosity landed him in hot water. This founder of modern medical science and great anatomist had a rather turbulent life. He was very famous and appointed as court physician in Spain. But while dissecting the body of a Spanish nobleman who had died in his care and cutting open his chest, Vesalius found that the man's heart was still beating. He was accused of murder and was brought before the Inquisition. The king commuted Vesalius' death sentence to a pilgrimage of penitence to the Holy Land. Unfortunately, Vesalius died in a shipwreck while on the passage back to Spain. Another scientist you all know, Charles Darwin, rocked the boat when he published his theory saying that we all evolved from a common ancestor, the ape. Believing all humans to be one species leaves little room for racism and erases great hope that things can change and improve. Note that Darwin wrote in 1861 to the American botanist Asa Gray, and I quote, Great God, how I would like to see the greatest curse on earth, slavery abolished. It sometimes takes courage to be a scientist. Our world can be frightening and overwhelming, but it is also an exciting place inviting each and every one of us to explore and discover. Let our national contest and foremost our Expo Science be a bit like the salons held during the Age of Enlightenment, the Siècle de Lumière. Of course, I mean salons that are more inclusive than those held at the time and to which only the elites were invited. What is nevertheless most fascinating about those salons, today you would probably say incubators or think tanks, is that they were the meeting point and place to be for people in the pursuit of knowledge. So salons, mostly hosted by women, brought people of various countries and origins together. This, in turn, incited those people to form groups that promoted dialogue across divides 
and which worked in a cooperative manner. Thus, new scientific methods were developed. Scientists exchanged and compared their knowledge, and discoveries emerged in a context of openness to the world. So, even when England and France were at war in the 18th century, the scientists continued to share news and observations. Science was supposed to rise above war and international conflict. But, as so often, that sadly changed. Scientific nationalism took over, the two world wars and the Cold War that followed upset the international relations in science. Human history has never been a quiet river. It has always been subject to and forged by pandemics and natural disasters. If we have made it until now, despite all obstacles, this is in large part due to our ability to cope and to adapt more or less rapidly to unexpected situations. We are able to find new ways and solutions precisely because we are curious, inquisitive, creative, and innovative. And this maximizes our chances to solve together the issues we have to face. An open and curious mind paired with empathy for our fellow human beings is what keeps us going and succeeding as a species. Our personality, our background, the means we have at our disposal may influence the way we tackle an issue or do our research, but it is by working together across borders and despite all that may separate us that we have a chance to succeed and thrive. During World War II, Winston Churchill had a system of labeling his members to the admiralty. One of the labels read, Action this day. Dear young scientists, your action this day is to continue being curious, to explore, and why not start a common project with one of the fellow young scientists you met today and present it next year. Another label was Report Progress. So, I would like to meet you all again next year, hopefully in person, so you can all report the progress that you will be making in the next 12 months. Until then, keep going and stay safe. Thank you.